station, how it can be utilized for personal professional branding, both for the internal community and for a website. To start off with, ArtStation is just a website that has obviously a community of artists, both CG and 2D. As you come up here, before we even sign in or sign up or anything, you can see that some of their artworks are being displayed on the home page. Scroll down, you can take a look at them and click around and see what's up here. But to kind of get started, we're going to click the sign up section here. Sign up, I always suggest using your real name, first and last name. Stay away from using any uh, nicknames at this point since this is part of your professional branding. So you want to use, for me, to be obviously Ken, last name Norman, and my username will just be Ken underscore Norman. My email, uh, you can use your uh, personal email for this. I'm just going to put mine in there. And then you'll just use whatever uh, password you want for this point and just say, I'm not a robot. What it's going to do then is it's going to send you a verification email. Um, I notice with Gmail, it happens really quick. And with Yahoo, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, but after you get the verification email, it'll say, hey, are you sure that you would like to sign up for ArtStation? ArtStation is free. Uh, every feature up here right now is currently free, so you'll be able to sign up and use it to both for the internal community and the website. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have you go ahead and create one and then click sign up. And then we'll pick back up after you guys sign up. Station, let's take a look around. First off, let's just kind of look at what it has to offer up at the top. So with the internal community as you come in, uh, you can see just by clicking on anyone's page, it'll actually just go inside of an artwork and you can see this is kind of what they're using for their internal block scenario. So you can see there's obviously the piece of artwork, a small description on the right hand side. And if you want to share it or pin it and tweet about that collection, you can. But if you could also click on the person himself and you can see their user profile. Their user profile normally is going to have some kind of banner at the top. You don't have to put one in unless you want to. It's going to have their ArtStation website and also just different various pieces of artwork that they have made through their, for their portfolio. Inside there, you can kind of click and see, again, the description and kind of go back and forth. And you can choose to follow them at this point, or you can hire them if you're looking for a modeler or whatever this person does. And you can see it's just a nice little, it's a nice, neat area, nice and clean and straight to the point. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about how to set ours up, our internal community. By coming in here and going to basically edit profile, this is where I'd like you to start, is to kind of go in and fill in some general information. Some of this will be populated for you. Uh, if you're still a student, obviously, your professional headline, you can just put inspiring character modeler, you know, dash student, or you can just put character modeler or character rigger, whatever you're doing. Your location, upload a little quick image of yourself or an avatar. I prefer images of yourself so people can start getting used to seeing your faces. And if you'd like to be hired to get ahead of time, so again, you can say if you're wanting to do either full-time contract or freelance work, that'll show up on your actual profile page. And we'll start populating our resume here by putting a small small summary at the top. Um, the summaries are always the hardest ones, but I want you to kind of think of it like uh, for a student, it would be, I've been inspired to do this since I was 12. I like such and such movie. This is why I chose to do this discipline. This is why I do it. Try to go that route with it. Also, you could put a link to your demo reel if you wish, and the skills that you're proficient in. Now, I would only put skills that you feel that this is what you're going to do for your discipline. Don't oversaturate this and put 20,000 different things in here. Kind of keep it to the primary of what you feel like you're the best at at this point. You can always add more later if you want. Your software proficiencies, whichever you want to add in there, as you start typing them in, they'll just kind of show up at the bottom, and you click them, and it'll even make the icons for you so you don't have to do that. Any professional or production experience, you'll kind of play here too. And the cool thing about populating the internal community is that it'll actually shows up on the website for you for free later. On your social profile, I suggest putting your email address so that people can contact you. Uh, once we go over the website portion, you can like hyperlink it back to itself if you wish, like I did. Your LinkedIn profile and your Pinterest URL. Again, by putting this stuff in, it's just going to kind of make it easier for both the internal community to get in contact with you and on your website later. So as soon as you hit save on those pages, we can now go to manage our portfolio. Inside manage portfolio, it's pretty easy. It will only let you do this part after verifying your email. So it might even let you log in after that, after you um, 
made your account, but it won't let you add anything to your profile until you verify it. So obviously I have a couple different things up here already, but let's just kind of walk through how to do this. Um, there's albums. Albums are kind of like folders, if the, if the way you think about it. So it's like we can make a folder for works in progress. We can make a folder just for a website. We can make a, a folder for just an individual asset. So let's start off by just saying, I want a new project. Now the part up here where it says untitled project, this is going to be um, populated by your title. So if I just type in Jimmy Project 2, just something I already had kind of going. And I'm just going to, you know, put whatever description it is. Uh, this I am currently modeling this face as an example project. Something along those lines. And you can add in a couple different things. You can add in uh, a video if you want. It'll hyperlink from Vimeo or YouTube. Uh, you can add images. It'll actually let you upload the images directly here. Or you can add a Sketchfab model or a Marmoset viewer right here for yourself. Marmoset viewer gets uploaded. The Sketchfab model is a hyperlink. You choose basically the medium in which you're trying to intend. Is it digital, 3D, traditional? So we can say digital 3D. Subject matter is going to be character. And we're going to say uh, what software I use. So at this point, I can start typing in like ZBrush or Maya. It has the icons for you. Uh, you can also tag it. So tagging, it could be, again, you could put extra stuff like uh, if I use RenderMan or if I use characters or if it's fantasy-based and things of that nature. So let's just kind of get some images in here. So first, you could, it just says drag and drop images here. So I had a couple just kind of chilling here. So I'm just going to grab them one at a time on my desktop. There's one. Let that completely load. There's two. And this is how it can, kind of can be used for a blog scenario. So if this is something I'm constantly going to be working on, I can add these images in. This description is kind of like the global description for the project, but as you're adding stuff, you can always put captions underneath the image as well. So I can just come over here and say, uh, this is just the geo I set up, test, and render man. And this one I can put, this is the color map. You could be a little bit more elaborate for, for this demo. I wanted to kind of keep it short and sweet so you're not too bored by watching this. You can also adjust the image in which it shows uh, as the thumbnail as well. And the most important part here is down here at the bottom, the albums that you make, you can choose where it is. So, hey, I want to put it in work in progress. I want it to be displayed on my website uh, album. <laughs> and if you only want it displayed <clears throat> on the internal community, you can turn it off on your website. And if you only want it displayed on the website, you can turn it off on the art station. For now, we'll leave them both on so I can show you both where they're, where they're both located. And we just come up here to the top. You can see now it should get that title in there. I'm just going to hit enter. And you can see you got to hit enter for it to label it. As soon as it's labeled, I can come over here and say published. Say save. It's going to say, do you want to push it to your social media? I don't wish to right now. So once I do that, um, I can come over to basically my community. Oops, pots these little pots up saying it was updated. I can come over to basically my profile. In my profile, you can see I have two of them now, but I call this Jimmy Project 2. We can kind of click on it, and you can see that the images are here, the small description I put on the right, and the actual tagline up underneath it. So as a blog scenario, you can keep adding to this and just kind of scrolls down, and you can see as you're progressively building your your character or your asset that you can see basically the workup. After we get it uh, worked up, uh, we can then put it to the website. But before I do that, I just want to go back to manage my portfolio so I can show you some of the other ones. I said there is a Marmoset viewer. So here, the Marmoset viewer can do almost a similar thing. You can see I got a short description. I said where I want it located, where it's located if it's an album. And I basically just added, I didn't even add a description for this because I just really just wanted to show you what the Marmoset Viewer looked like. And then we can kind of go back to uh, just my profile again to show you what it looks like live. So Marmoset Viewer is kind of like a, a live viewer that you can rotate around. 
Uh, this 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 example is actually provided by Dustin Tingler. You can see at the top here. Um, just to kind of show you how you can move through it, but you can also by using the marmoset, you can see the topology and what, which is here. Topology gloss. Let me just kind of click in here. So you can see the wireframe, the topology, the gloss. So it's just another way to display your um, assets. So if you don't want to use Marmoset Viewer, there is one more. You can come underneath here. There's something called Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an external website. It's very similar. It's free. And it hooks right into ArtStation. So you can see this is a model I did, which you can kind of spin around it in real time, and you can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, this is mobile friendly, so you can view it on your uh, phone as well. And you can also see your rendering options if you just want to see the wireframe. Spin a wireframe. If you have a texture, you can put it up there with a texture. So there's just a couple of different ways you could display your blog. And these arrows, because I have more than one thing on my profile, it'll just bounce to the next asset. So once we get everything populated inside both my edit profile and manage my portfolio, you can see the next one is Website Builder. In Website Builder, what I did is I just typed in, obviously, the name of the website will be you. There is some tweaking of the colors on the website. I'll let you guys play around with this on your own, but basically what I uh, do is just kind of go in and choose complementary colors to keep it really simple, just complement what I'm working on at the time. For websites, you don't want to go over two or three colors because your artwork is really what's there to make it shine, not the background. So I'm going to go to Pages, and I added basically three pages. By default, it should have just one called Home, and it's going to be going to the gallery. So if I just go into Edit, I'll just show you real quick. All I did was basically take out the gallery just by clicking this X right here, and I added in a hyperlink to a YouTube video of my demo. So you guys can see what, um, so on the home page when you first go there, it's just a nice little compilation of my demo reel. Most of you won't have demo reels to start with, so you can kind of just put the gallery on the home page until you develop one. And after we get that done, we can click save. I'm going to go back to pages before displaying it. And underneath gallery, this is where it gets interesting. You can add the gallery at the bottom. Same thing, call it gallery, give it a little tagline name gallery. And click the add gallery section and you can choose when you do that which album it's going to. So here I have this one going to the album website. So whatever I designated in my internal community's uh, portfolio to go to this album will only be displayed on this link on the web page itself. And I also did that same thing for work in progress. So underneath work in progress I had another album just called work in progress section and I hit save. So now when we go to view the website, again, this all comes with the art station. All I did was change some colors to be something neutral. And I really just wanted it to be about my artwork. So you can see that I got a couple things only showing up in my gallery. Again, I have those two things showing up in my work in progress. The resume page and these links right here at the bottom, uh, the LinkedIn, email, and the homepage, and Pinterest, these were all populated by you filling out your uh, your edit profile on the actual internal community. The resume is automatically generated from the description summary you put up there and all the skills and the job descriptions that you put up there. So you don't even have to build these. So it's a really quick avenue. And again, you can have stuff only display on your website or the internal community. That is up to you for you to decide. Um, I think this is a very valuable thing because all ArtStation is asking for is this little bitty logo right here, which is not that big of a thing for some a free website. And you can see at the top, my URL is Ken Norman, Ken underscore Norman dot artstation dot com. It's got art in the title, so it's not going to be going to Wix or any weird website. So the URL is pretty standard. Right here where it says Ken Norman, you can replace this with an image as well, just like a little pegboard for yourself. But now you have both an internal community and an external community, meaning the website we could send to employers so they don't have to physically log into ArtStation. And then we have an internal community where we can either use as an R&D page, or to start following friends, like a peer-to-peer -peer network. So if I go back to my portfolio, you can see you can start following people and people can start following you. So if I click on a couple of different people that I like here, and I can see that you know this person worked on Tomb Raider, I can scroll down and see the different various images that they loaded up and the descriptions that they have on the side. You can also leave comments, share, pen, tweet, and you can also develop your peer network. So I think ArtStation is a very valuable tool just because it can build up your peer network. So you start getting people to follow you, get your name out there. And you can also have the blog as your internal 
work in progress that you're constantly building something. And again, you have full control. So even after I'm done with this, if I don't want these iterations up here, I can always delete it and make a new uh, album or a new project that's just the finished artwork and I can get rid of the iterations. Um, you can also come up here and look at the jobs. They have job postings on the job board. You can see there's Blizzard, uh, Gameloft, and a couple other uh, companies up here, but you can also just search by type, remote work, freelance work, contract work, uh, permanent work. Um, I've seen a lot of game companies here. A couple of the, the bigger uh, film companies are starting to get into it now, so I think that's great. Uh, there's some obviously some challenges you can come and it can, you know, there's some internal challenges going on where you guys can uh, participate in some community type challenges for artwork, I think is great. Activities and just searching people people's uh, art station in general. So you can just start searching for character rigging, you can search for character modeling, you can search for environment modeling. Things of that nature I think is going to be very useful um, to keep you inspired but also to develop your own personal portfolio. This is all about professional branding so putting yourself out there making some peer-to-peer -peer contacts and getting your website ready where you can send to an employer to get a job. This is just a quick overview of ArtStation and how it works. Again, I have my personal portfolio here that you can kind of build and populate as you go. And the blogging scenario is just running downstream here. And you're adding these little taglines underneath it. And then we have the website itself, which is underneath the website builder. I hope this was a good explanation of ArtStation, and I wish you guys the best in building your art community. Thanks.